How's it going everyone? It is Friday, April 5th, 2024, and let's get into the video for today. So, um, let's go over the picks from the prior video. The first one that we have here is RTX. So, we, when the video came out, RTX was over here on April 4th. Um, and I took the trade right over here, 120 at um, the 93 calls for 665. Um, had excellent relative strength during the market drop. Today, it had this long red candle and it was holding all the gains for that long red candle. I added here at 810 and then I took profits somewhere around here because we were approaching this major D1 resistance. And I think it's a little bit easier to see on the weekly chart, but you can see how there's been a pretty key level right around 101.40. So I took profits pretty close to that level. Sometimes, you know, you can break through. Sometimes you exit level a little bit early. Uh, it's not an exact uh, price, I would say. So took my profits early and got out for 865. So really nice win on that ad. Um, the next one that we had was Pan W. So I gave a Pan W short for next week. Um, I liked uh, the break today, today, uh, the break yesterday, Pan W very weak daily chart, excellent on the D1. Um, and it's been, you know, kind of rallying with the market, but not been very strong today. Market has reclaimed a lot of the candle, Pan W is well below its SMA. So we have a target set out to take a nice one ATR profit on Pan W still open. So nice way to start off the month. Um, let's also go over just how our current picks are doing. Um, so I'm going to take out uh, RTX and I'm going to take out, I'll put in Pan W over here. All right. So next one over here was App. So App, I actually exited for a scratch, but you had potential to exit out for a small uh, win. Um, the stock held up pretty well in the market decline and is rallying up. So um, with app, I'm going to call it a scratch because I took a scratch. Um, so we're going to call this a break even on the trade. And um, I'm going to mention why we're giving it a break even here. Um, so app, we can take off the list. Wells Fargo, um, still, it's doing okay. It's in this long compression. So at this point, we're really just trying to exit for a scratch, uh, in my opinion. Um, our Lyft trade, Lyft has been an absolute dog. So we're trying to get out at a pretty decent uh, point over here. After these long moves, there is usually some sort of bounce, but now we haven't got the market trend quite in our favor. Um, and we're really leaning on this level on AVWAP E and this horizontal uh, resistance. So I'm waiting for this bounce and lift. I'm going to be patient. I don't think it's going to be huge. I don't know if it's going to come or not. Um, but well, actually, I, have a, I, I highly suggest, not highly suggest, but I do believe that there will be a bounce because this stock has a choppy trend uh, and we still have another two weeks for these calls. But again, I think the important distinction here is I'm trying to take a high probability loss versus expecting to take a huge winner. I'm not expecting to take a huge winner. Um, and this is really dependent on two things, my stock bias and my market bias, which we're going to get to in a second. Uh, and then we have our Amazon put credit spread, which is in excellent shape. So that is expiring next week. It should expire uh, worthless. And depending on your market bias, you can buy it back for a couple of pennies. Um, you know, see how the, the market does today. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the, the positions that we have on. So let's take a look at the market and then I'm going to give a look at the positions that I'm in right now. So market on a D one level yesterday was a warning sign. And I mentioned that my long-term market bias has changed from a two bullish to a one bullish. Long red candle. Again, I don't exactly know why, um, but all we have to do is know that all the information is going to be distilled in this price action. So 
again, fundamentally, nothing has really changed um, from what I've seen. You know, we're still waiting for earnings data. Inflation is still like fine. Uh, you know, the economic strength is still good. So nothing has changed on our uh, macro basis. Um, China is looking a little bit better. So that's even actually a slight positive sign. Um, the market is basing their move on the expectations of rate cuts. Is there going to be three or is there going to be two this year? So originally they're pricing three. And uh, next, by the time we look at the video next week, we're going to all have some stuff on the Fed swaps data and see if they've changed anything on their price in. I think that is a key story point for the market. So that's something that you should be checking. Technically, again, look, we're still above our SMAs. We're kind of around this AVWAPQ area over here. And the main thing, I think, is the price action. i um, not even really worried about the SMAs. I mean, they're really far uh, out of play. Um, and you can tell that the price action, again, is strong because we've had not as many red bars in the initial move. And we really hugged the 8 EMA very tightly. We didn't really dip below it too much. And now we can see here how there's a lot more dips. Uh, there's a lot more fighting back and forth. And it's starting to weaken and then eventually start to go horizontal. So... That is kind of the, the the subtle warning signs, and then here's the first major warning sign. Okay, so market bias is slightly less bullish. What is our short-term market bias? Well, this is represents, I think, a very bearish move, and we are in some we are kind of in this point of indecision. I feel like what we want to see is how well do we reclaim this bar? We know that buyers from all the way over here are going to be in this move, and we're not going to suddenly roll over there's going to be some volatility. And like I mentioned, like I mentioned over here in July, right? We didn't get the follow through. We held this open. We rallied up and ate away at most of this key red bar. So there's a chance for some follow through and there's a chance to unwind some of our long positions when we can. So in the shorter term, I'm a little bit more cautious, a little bit more bearish right now i want to see some buyers engaged um the unemployment report pretty much came in line so i don't think it changed the story of the market in my opinion we opened flat we grinded up higher we're at this sort of halfway point in the bar so let's look at the h1 chart i think it shows it pretty clearly here's some long candles we got actually a little bit more to the halfway point then sellers came in knocked it down now we're sort of at a key point with vwap and we're trying to see if this is going to hold or if sellers are going to step in or even buyers at this point are going to step in and try to unwind this position. So this was a minor point um, of support. but looks like the key resistance was at around this gap yesterday. Um, right here, I guess if I look at this close, 59.39. So we found some resistance at this gap. We tried to poke in and then any 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 people who are long are probably looking to get out at a scratch at this level so cause some initial move and then we saw some nice consecutive candles on the downside right now so short-term market bias i think is bearish not insanely bearish but slightly bearish all right oh that's my boss messaging me um we're gonna put that on pause for a second so intraday market bias what's going on over here well we have this we have this move back here which is context we saw some really heavy swelling pressure and early in the day we had to make sure that we didn't have any follow through and there was going to be a bid so we rallied up we had this one op bearish cycle over here at 1040 compressed at the high of the day lots of tails okay buyers are engaged and we got some lift off on this bullish cycle nice so this is some nice entry point on some longs and i was able to get some day trade longs over here now, later in the day, we had another potential bullish cross right here at 12.55. So I really liked this point right here. But here was the warning sign, bearish engulf. We needed to quickly reclaim it and we didn't. We had follow through. Okay, so that tells us that now it's very, it's not as likely that the move is going to continue into the gap. We have to tread cautiously. A little double top here and now we have a stronger move to VWAP. So now over here when I was a two bullish, I said, hey, look, if we get a deeper retracement to VWAP, I'm going to be a little bit more neutral because, um, you know, buyers aren't as aggressive and we know that sellers are showing and are kind of flexing their muscles a little bit. So sellers are flexing their muscles. Move to a VWAP. I'm not 
I'm not sort of uber bearish right now, but I am a little bit more neutral. I'm not putting on any more day trades. And because of this selling pressure here, we know that sellers are still nearby. So we can't get too crazy with our day trades. So right now we're marking neutral, waiting to see if VWAP holds. This long green candle that we try to defend looks like it's getting faded. So I think that's mildly bearish and I wouldn't actually try to do uh, too much over here. Um, and you know, just kind of being kind of being a little bit cautious right now, right? We don't have to rush into any sort of crazy picks. So all this context over here, right? What should we do with this market information? So first off, from a swing trading perspective, we were able to have a lot of aggressive swinging, right? For most of this rally, for the rest of this rally, we wouldn't have as much aggressive swinging. And for me personally, I have a few more long swings and put credit spreads, and I'm looking to unwind this position in the next week or two, depending on the price action. And I know that we have some market bid into earnings. So I know that bid is going to at least offset any sort of major selling. And we should see at least some more neutral action, right? And if we reclaim this candle fast, that's still pretty good. It's still pretty bullish. Um, and I think the best case is that we're actually able to make a new all-time high during earnings if earnings are good and we have a strong rally into mega cap tech and financial earnings. However, if we don't get that, right, markets unable to reclaim the high or even the most bearish case that starts to sink lower, then we have to be careful and we have to kind of keep both these scenarios in mind. So from a swing trading perspective, I am unwinding my longer swings, I'm looking to shorten my swing duration, and I'm looking to stay a little bit more balanced. So I want more of like a 50-50 or maybe I'll maybe do like a 60-40 split of longs and shorts. And we're looking to take, again, these short-term swings, go for these one ATR moves. If you're unsure, go for a half ATR move um, and just try to kind of snipe these trades because the market conditions are changing um, and we have to kind of now really be picky with our entries if you are day trading i think there's some excellent opportunity to day trade because we have a lot of volume a lot of volatility the nice thing about when these market transitions is that buyers and sellers institutionally are bidding or i guess fighting from both sides right we saw long move here long move here so we get these wide intraday ranges we get these deeper trends and we're really able to ride some of these moves higher we also reduce our overnight risk because we have more uncertainty so we can capture nice gains in the day and we don't have to rely on these longer term swing trades we shorten that trade duration so day trading should be a little bit easier compared to what we saw over here it was really tough to trade these intradays and i i, I got a couple of death by a thousand cuts on these days because we have these strong stocks no market tailwind and it would ramp up and just absolutely die right it's just awful 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 uh day trading conditions all right, so those are that is our long-term bias and our short-term bias. What are some of the picks for today? So um, I'm going to give a, a nice short pick that I really liked, which is Ulta. So let's look at this D1 chart on Ulta. It was nice and grindy for quite a while. Negative earnings reaction over here, and then we had some strong selling on some news. So let's check on quickly what this news is. Um... Ch -ch 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 ulta slumps okay so looks like it was um revised earnings guidance okay so that's on march 31st so what's the march is this march 31st let's take a look april 3rd april 1st yeah so march 8th there's march 31st is actually on friday so looks like it wasn't here we got to match the news to the date so looks like april 3rd um the demand is cooling across the board. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Warns of a business slowdown. Interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this was actually April 3rd. I was right. I, I matched the wrong time. Okay. So April 3rd. CEO warns of a slowdown. That is a sign. Reduce earnings. So there is some movement to this news. So 
that's our that's kind of our catalyst we have to know what's driving that so again I'm, I'm not really good with these fundamental catalysts but i know that it's not some kind of like crazy news pop this is something that affects earnings it affects the bottom line so there's going to be institutions quickly adjusting to this level it's a little bit extended but i like how we're digesting the gains and we're holding the 8 ema and the halfway point of this long red candle we are also into the earnings gap i'm just going to take off this buy sell signal so we can see it a little bit more clearly we're out of the earnings gap and here is the the bottom of that earnings gap so it has a pretty wide atr range ivs are going to be pretty high for options but um what you could do is if it breaks this level here at around 440 you have a lot of room to this next level at 428 so there's a 10 dollar move in the stock and that would be uh my pick so i've set an alert at the bottom of that range um and we can zoom in over here this is a tall bounce and i really like the price action today actually because yesterday you know there was kind of a short covering here buyers and sellers are fighting and so we need to see this low of the day break because otherwise we don't know we don't quite know if this is going to be support or uh if it's going to act as support just yet because the stock is so overextended institutions might think this is a fair value for ulta um so gonna give it some time it may not happen right away but i think that's going to be a pretty nice short if it sets up over there so ulta is the first pick um and i was looking for some other nice red royal flush picks um the other one that was pretty nice is mcd it's a little bit overextended from the 8 ema for my taste um i think yesterday would be the better opportunity or even on on april 3rd was a really nice opportunity but uh what i would do is just put an alert for an lrsi h1 alert um and if we get that then mcd could also be a pretty nice entry um the trick is we don't want to we don't want to get a stock that's too overextended so i think starbucks actually has some pretty nice steady price action over here it's been a little bit choppy uh here's the nice entry point on the breakdown a lot of bounce trend line breaks um, and i really like how it's been continuing today while the market has been sinking lower so starbucks is also pretty good but 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 we want to get excellent entries right because now we really can't compromise on our picks because the market bias is a little bit more neutral so we have to have really excellent d1 picks um let's take a look at a couple ones riven has been weak forever um so this could be a good short but it has to break through ten dollars you can see here it's provided an excellent uh weak price point oh looks like it's breaching right there so um need to see a little bit more in my opinion uh tesla had some news but also couldn't break through so there's a lot of stocks that um i go to tesla right here that are setting up right you can see how it tested this low at 160 and it's still held um adobe was one that's like hey it's not bad it's poking through but then we have this trend line in the way uh roku was called out earlier but you can see how there is a pretty long term bounce trend line all the way from may 17th that it has been respecting today so i'm not crazy about that uh, intc also has a very close to its trend line so there's not a lot of room there um so there are some nice quality shorts but um i think these still have to set up so ulta may be my pick but i'm going to give a quick look at the green royal flush side and see if anything is looking great cop is looking very very nice uh, energy stocks are looking quite good so i think that's where you would stick to some longs talked about rtx that still looks really great it looks like it's retesting that level um cop is good cop is really good still strong uh npc is slowing down a little bit dvn um the other thing i'm going to check is my 45 degree charts so let's see what's coming up over here um so we had disney oh yeah so there was some major board news over here so it sank from that uh cat is looking actually pretty good 
recovered all the gains very very nicely today uh ge has been very strong right continue to pyre did not really react to the market yesterday uh root has been absolutely insane i haven't really been touching root <laughs> because it's been going really parabolic here but uh root has been quite insane uh kava is okay dallas has earnings coming up but it does rally into earnings axp gm hlt is kind of slowing over here let's take a look at ball doing okay uh ci ci is actually compressing ci is not too bad i think if it breaks this compression we could be in for a nice move yeah gs has been choppy since this breakout <laughs> HIG compressing, ABVV. Ooh, that's a breakdown if I've seen one. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, on the long side, it's really hard not to like anything outside of COP. So let's take a look at this on an H1 basis. Um, not a lot. Oh, ANF looks like it's cracking down here. So there's not been a ton of entry points. You could probably enter somewhere here at two o'clock and then you could ride this move higher and then yeah there's some market weakness and then you could get over here so that was a pretty nice entry point uh, maybe let's look, take a look at the m15 we can get a, a more precise entry so that says a pretty big dip intraday right over higher pretty big intraday pretty big dip intraday right at higher so i'm going to set an m15 alert on cop and i am going to enter and look to enter on this M15 alert and look at the price action there. So those are going to be our two picks. Nothing we're going to take immediately today. There's nothing I think setting up amazingly, but we're going to keep an eye uh, on those. So it's going to be Ulta short. Um, if it breaks, if it breaks the low of 440. And then we are going to look at COP long on an LRSI M15 pullback. So those are the two trades for today. We'll see if we get, if we're able to take them anytime later in the week. Um, but I hope you guys found this pretty helpful. Um, again, we're gonna look to unwind some of our long positions um, and they say a little bit more balanced coming into these next weeks, but we're still looking pretty good right now. So thanks for watching everyone, hope it was helpful, and I will catch you all in the next video.